Twas a week before Navidad, and all through the house, not a donkey was stirring, not even a mouse. The ham set was placed by the window with care, in the hopes that a president soon would be there. The familia gathered, all snug in their robes, while visions of spacecraft dance around an earth globe. With mom growing tired and dad taking off cap, they had just settled down for that nice Christmas nap. When a rose from the living room came such a static and clatter, they hear the voice through it, what was the matter? Away to the window, the father flew with a flash. He dialed the knobs, I have him at last. With the moonlight reflecting a twinkle and glow, a rocket flies over, so above them below. When what should the father's ear should he hear, but a crackly voice coming out through the gear. The signal was faint, but distinctive enough. That's gotta be Dwight, I've heard him enough. With a big gust of wind, as the heavens did cry, they all saw the rocket up in the sky. It was drifting off onwards as it glittered with light, but not before a boom lit up the night. It was crystal and clear as it flew out of sight. This is President Eisenhower. Merry Christmas. Good night. Oh yeah, that's right, it's a Retro Rockets holiday special. What can I say, I couldn't help myself with this one. That frankly ridiculous story you heard was my interpretation of a little known program by the name of Project Score. My depiction probably wasn't all too accurate, but this craft would, somewhat hilariously, go right over a bunch of developing countries broadcasting such topics as scientific advancement and peace for all mankind. How nice. For those new viewers, first of all, Thank you. Secondly, here on my little project called Retro Rockets, we take an in-depth look at what devices and tech spacecraft had, as well as highlighting more overlooked or obscure spacecraft. If that sounds good to you and want to see more, make sure you remember to subscribe to the channel for when my next video drops. Thanks for bearing with me on that. I hate having to do that, but the facts don't lie. It helps. Now that that annoying bit is over with, let's see what makes this incredible holiday machine tick. Being headed and developed by the army, SCORE consisted of but one craft, but to be fair, it was a really big craft. You'll see what I mean. Launched on December 18, 1958, SCORE would be the first communication satellite ever made and would be able to collect, store, and replay data in the form of voice. While it did have a cheery holiday greeting, only 88 people knew of SCORE's entire existence, with most of the support crews being told, it's just a test launch, bro, don't worry about it. Out of those few 88, an even fewer 35 personnel knew of SCORE's true mission, testing a radio relay satellite for military communications, and an even darker goal, testing full-range capability of the Atlas ICBM. To set the stage, so to say, we have to start with, of course, the retro rocket. Trust me, it'll be pretty significant. The vehicle, I mean, apologies, the launch vehicle, was the really ye olde Atlas called the Hot Rod Atlas and being a modified version of the Atlas B variant. I went over the basics of the Atlas rocket in my Ranger video, but the Atlas rocket was basically a tinfoil balloon rocket held up by internal pressure. It kind of failed, like a lot, and it also sent up Mercury crews. But sorry, that's a story for another day. Getting back to the Atlas that took score up, this was at a time that it just barely got its middle sustainer engine slapped in, allowing it for orbital capability. And when I mean orbital capability, you're probably like, oh yeah, it goes up and does the little nose fairing thing and chucks the satellite out, right? Nah, wrong. This whole damn shebang's going orbital, baby. Other than its boosters, all of this atlas is going to be making its way around. But wait a sec here. Why are we talking about a satellite? Why would the army be launching a whole atlas rocket, sustainer and all, 
into a full low Earth orbit for that. Well, that's the thing. As we start talking about the early tech that made up SCORE, we should probably talk about its antenna first. Because it was kind of made out of the rocket a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like it was kind of all of the rocket. It was dubbed the Talking Atlas. And when looking up SCORE for this video, I kept going, Where is this thing, man? No pictures of it. But in my ignorance, I failed to understand the fact that this thing is literally just some electronics slapped inside a side compartment. And that it simply just carries the rocket along with it, like a nice big antenna friend. It's quite the shame, too, because this is a 1958, and man, this thing sounded like absolute garbage. We'll get into craft detail soon, but I just have to say, Project Echo was literally just a giant foil space balloon, and even it sounds like it got better reception than this big-ass thing did. That aside, the actual satellite was mounted inside the Atlas's side fairing, and it was these two redundant boxes right here. Each would weigh around 100 pounds and house all of SCORE's systems. It would also be cobbled together in a period of only three months to meet SCORE's deadline. So now that we know the history of Project SCORE, let's take a look at the Metal Box of Wonders. Hey there! Step right up and check out what we could be going home with in today's episode of Spin to SCORE! That's right everyone, it's everyone's favorite spacecraft game show! Now let's see what lovely prizes we have for today's show! And now, let's see what we have around the first door, door number one! Oh, that's right, it's the old classic! A battery that only lasts 12 days! Now we'll see what exciting things are next, behind door number two! Oh yes, it's a brand new transmitter receiver unit! If that didn't blow your socks off, we'll have to see what's behind door number three. Congratulations! It's a four-minute dual-sided magnetic drive with a recording of President Eisenhower. Too much, maybe? Nah, everyone loves spin to score. First up on our game-winning score was the battery. This big Model T-looking thing would take up the center chunk of score, and it would output around 56 watts of power, and would be comprised of silver zinc oxide. It was non-rechargeable and would die after 12 days, failing after just 8 hours of transmission time. Probably because score was so secretive, I couldn't find any voltage numbers or subsystems documentation about this guy, as much as I tried. So we are moving on to the transmitters. Being both wired up to the Atlas via long, quote-unquote, antenna wires, the transmitter and receiver units on SCORE were completely made up of commercial, off-the-shelf radio components. With the transmitter, it would run at a frequency of 132 MHz, and at a power level of around 8 watts when in operation. Its radio transmission system also incredibly ran on, and I'm not even kidding here, straight-up vacuum tubes. Must have been some really good vacuum tubes, too, to withstand the launch in the zero-g of space. I would have loved to see documentation for that, if I had any. Moving on, we'll quickly touch on the receiver unit, and as well as SCORE's beacon. The 150 MHz 10dB gain receiver on SCORE would enable uploading and rewriting of messages to its recorder. And from what I can tell, that is just about all it did really. But hey, at least it used transistors this time. As far as the beacon on SCORE, it ran on 108 MHz and would be used for tracking purposes. Before we get into the crazy vintage recorder thingy, I should mention the last few devices that comprise SCORE. It's command system and a DC to DC converter. The command system sounds cool, command system, but SCORE's was a little underwhelming. It would, as I understand it, have a whopping three of these commands. One to record a message, one to transmit the message, and one to stop transmitting. As far as the DC to DC converter, we don't know if it steps up, or steps down voltage. But it did one of those things. A few other notable features of SCORE worth mentioning was it having this one big ass roll gyro on the Atlas, presumably for orbital control, and the fact it used one of the first space communications networks, consisting of this beauty of a thing mounted on a World War II searchlight trailer. 
Alright, now that we've been through all the basic systems, it's finally time to get to the part of score that made me put this in my video to-do list. The Christmas message, and that wild looking recorder. Being a so-called tape recorder, in what little documentation there is, this thing looks more like a magnetic VHS head than it does a reel-to-reel -reel tape system to me. This was my train of thought at first, until I found this single, shitty-ass image showing what is presumably the internals of the score recorder. Then, I saw this grainy floppy thing and went, hmm, maybe not. Turns out, after some more research, my boy Andrew at DrewXMachina.com had my answer. It is, indeed, a giant roll of tape. 75 feet, or 23 meters of it, in fact, using 25 micron thick mylar tape, and was actually capable of up to seven teletype channels. It was a continuous loop system, and after playing its message or data, would feature a little metal contact at the end of the tape loop to signal the recorder to stop. Loading new data or voice messages onto the recorder was a fairly easy process. When one was transmitted to it, it would simply just overwrite the old one. In fact, the first overwrite happened shortly after launch. Originally, SCORE was loaded with a greeting voiced by an army official, but after learning about the program, President Eisenhower mentioned that he would be willing to do the greeting. Understandably not wanting to look absolutely terrible, the teams risked Soviet spying to upload the president's message mid-flight, and they were successful. As far as other details or photos of this thing, unfortunately, not much. I did quite a bit of researching as I really wanted to find out more about this thing, but the rest I can say was it could only record about four minutes of speech and recorded at the 300 to 5000 hertz range. However, the one thing that was preserved in all of its low quality glory was that famous Eisenhower holiday message. And while my introduction wasn't quite word for word, I think it got the gist of it. Project Score, as cool as it is, is honestly just such a meme to me. It's got the rocket for the antenna, it's got the ye olde tape cassette player thing, it's got the kind of weird greeting going on, and it's got all this secrecy for something that barely even worked, and I love it for that. I really do like the cleverness, but man, it's just such an odd and weird thing. Score is one of those projects that really puts things into perspective when compared to a certain Soviet craft such as Luna 3. And even though the US and our economy would gain the upper hand, there is no doubt that they were leading by leaps and bounds in the beginning. You know what? Speaking of things that barely worked, that gives me an idea. Let's send this video off in style, shall we? How about some festive, unscheduled disassemblies of our favorite balloon rocket? Or should I say, score antenna? As always, I'm Ben, this is Retro Rockets, and I hope you have an amazing holiday.